Holmes and Larry Mizell through MDC Holdings, which is the parent company of Richmond American Homes, is their cover, the largest uh, home building company in the United States. And and uh, you mentioned uh, recently and reminded me about Carl I. Brown and, and Home America Mortgage, which is a subsidiary of MDC. And I might add that Home America Mortgage was named in the J.P. Morgan, I mean, uh, uh, the uh, not J.P. Morgan, but the ch- or the uh, no, the recent one with uh, Lehman, with the uh, uh, bank bailout settlement of 13 billion with uh, with a uh, with a uh, uh, get on my brain stuff this morning. I'm still not awake, not enough coffee, I guess. <laughs> uh, in the in the recent settlement, anyway, that they did out in New York, the strike force that uh, they settled for 13 billion. The Home of America was named in that lawsuit. And uh, as a result of me pushing things, and uh, they uh, they should have been nailed for a hundred trillion dollars with these artificial mortgages. But this stuff really never started in 2000. It started way back in 1981. So what I'd like for you to do is I want you to touch on that HUD properties, if you would, for a moment. Uh, Silverado and Neil Bush and uh, mortgages as a mortgage broker that you did, uh, and and things in Denver. Uh, that we're home by Melman. Would you please? Well, going way back, you're, you're, you're pushing my, this old brain, you know. Going way back to around 76, 77, uh, we were, I was based in, in Colorado. Uh, we were tasked, because we were traveling back and forth to Colorado Springs and Denver all the time from where we were, we were out on a pipeline and how you were out on a top secret communication site. Um, there was a there was a bank for the savings and loan that was processing titles to properties. Um, we would on a we would on a regular basis carry 15, 20 uh, boxes of uh, documents to an attorney firm in Denver. Uh, the attorney firm was Brownstein and something. I just recall that. And uh, when one time when I looked at the documents, I saw I saw that they were. Uh, they were titles to properties. Now, this is around the same time that hundreds and thousands of HUD homes became missing. And I have to think that there has to be a tie-in somewhere there. Hello? Yeah, Stu. Are you there? Hello, Stu. Are you there? Hang on, something's uh, something's going on here. Don't know quite what. Stu, you're you're hitting a you're hitting a button are there. We, uh, are we there? I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here hitting a mute button and unmute. But those well, 79,000 HUD houses, there were 79,000 were reported missing off the HUD headquarters computers when they the government was one of the few that had computers back then. They just disappeared overnight. And then suddenly, they started ending up in the hands of the Denver Illuminati Zionist Connection, I call it, Millman, Leonard Millman, my ex in and his buffer, Larry Mizell, part of this Council of 13 Illuminati people. Now, later on, I think it was 10 or 15 years later, a reporter named Bowles in Arizona got killed, and he was on to it. According to Brian Quigg, and you remember Brian, he was digging Charles Keating's trash cans and General John Singlaw and, and Walter, Bush, Bush, Walter Bush Securities and so forth and pulling out Secret Service notes out of the trash cans. But Bowles, he worked with, and Bowles got assassinated. Nobody ever figured out why he got killed down there, but Bowles was killed over the fact that he was discovering all these win financial finance MDC subsidiary uh, company, uh, Phil Wynn, the, the HUD scamster from 1989, and uh, he had discovered these houses that were being sold by MDC and various entities and were being financed by the boys, once again, Wynn Financial in Denver. They got him killed. I could, If I could jog my memory, the guy's dead now, but he was an assassin. He, uh, he, was, uh, he was tied to the glory hole mines. You might remember the name out there in Denver where he shoved some guys uh, in his pickup truck down in the glory hole mine up there in Central City and killed him. And they blamed two other guys that uh, the whole bit. But uh, it was 
sides of those houses, I mean, you were carrying mortgages. You were carrying these documents with a mortgage banker and, uh, and taking them to a certain bank. Did you talk about that as well? That was a Leonard Melman controlled owned bank. And then, well, and then later, and those were early oh, yeah. years when we were carrying those titles to those properties to the Brownstein law firm. In later years, in the in the late 80s, um, we were set up as a proprietary company. You know, when when you're in black ops, you just like the enterprise. The enterprise had the Southern Air Transport. They had several other uh, our air coast, uh, so several companies. And so the, the CIA has what's called proprietary companies. They set these companies up, and whether it's the CIA, the NSA, or the OSGs. And in this part, it was the OSDs working straight for, for Bush Clinton. We uh, opened uh, mortgage companies throughout the United States. World Home Mortgage was the name of the company that I oversaw. We delivered million, hundreds of millions of mortgages um, to these mortgage bankers, uh, several of them, uh, North American Mortgage, uh, Countrywide Mortgage, uh, Lehman Brothers, uh, um, across across the board, hundreds of millions we processed. We had a, a whole processing center in both Colorado Springs and Denver where we processed these mortgages. Uh, all, and we were paid, uh, the, the company was paid, uh, made huge profits off that. Where it went, I don't know. Uh, that wasn't my part. My part was to get everything processed. But you process them to banks. You sold them here. You process them at the orders of the government. And these were processed through banks. But then the banks turned around and triggered the Federal Deposit Insurance Company uh, insurance, which was being controlled out of Dallas, Texas, for the, for the Colorado region. Okay, sure. It was FS back in the days. It was FSLIC, FDIC, RTG. You know, all, all, all of those entities that existed. Uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, most of them were packaged together in, in you know, $20 million, $30 million packages. And since the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and those houses may or may not have been in existence, but the loans are there. Over a million Americans lost their homes in the last year or two. What's happened to those people? Have they just become homeless, or have our bankers become our landlords? Well, you know, when I left, you could rent a house for four or five hundred dollars. Now you rent a house for a thousand dollars because the rental market is so huge. The rental market's huge with these landlords and the bankers because they've taken the homes away from other people and they can't buy a home. That American dream is gone. Now, I, uh, if you, if you'll pardon me here, I, you know, I've tried to find answers here for the last twenty years. I've been talking about this. And I'd also like to, uh, I've got a link up here to uh, an article you did, What the Hell is Happening? And in that article, you say, if you still believe that America is free, just consider some of the things that are illegal in America today. Starting on January 1st, it's now illegal to make or import 75-watt incandescent light bulbs anywhere in the United States. In Oregon, it's illegal to collect rainwater that falls on your own property, that Colorado, too. In New Jersey, it's illegal to have an unrestrained cat or dog in your vehicle while you're driving. If you milk your cow and sell some of your milk to your neighbors, you could end up having a home raided by federal agents. In Miami Beach, Florida, you must recycle your trash property properly or face huge fines. Over the United States, cops are shutting down lemonade stands run by children because they don't have proper permits. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, one unemployed woman had her survival garden brutally ripped out and carted away by government thugs because it did not conform to regulations. They did the same thing in Arlington, Texas. Over in Massachusetts, all children in daycare centers are mandated by state law to brush their teeth after lunch. And the state even provides the fluoride toothpaste for the children. And uh, one public school in Texas, a 12-year-old girl named Sarah Bustamantes was arrested for spraying herself with per perfume. A 13-year-old student in a school in Albuquerque, New Mexico, was arrested by police for burping in class. And in the United States cities, have passed laws that actually make it illegal to feed the homeless. This is just a, a small sampling here. Years ago, Chip, I came out with a plan for Liberty Villages. I, I wanted to restore the self-sufficient family farm, and I wanted to use veterans. And I thought the way to do this 
we can put low cost structures like teepees, which worked for the Indians for 10,000 years. We could, uh, we could, uh, if we grow our own food and put uh, solar panels and uh, windmills on our property and tell the neighborhood association to kiss our ass, can't trap the water off of their roof, then we we don't need the bankers for much of anything. It was a way to become independent. Recently, I, ha I met a gentleman by the name of Noah West who has the Noah's Ark Project, and he's a builder. He's a builder who got about uh, 150 patents on uh, different types of homes. He, uh, what he wanted to see was, again, villages, communities put up using houses that don't leak energy like a sieve, that don't have to be heated and cooled with electricity. He wanted to put electricity on the house, on the roof of the house, put a, a water tank in the basement, just trap all the rainwater, filter it, keep it. And uh, by by powering the house, and we we've actually got the technology. You can put a little g magnetic generator in your garage and never have to buy another drop of electricity. You can run your electric cars like the Tesla. You can now run those from the wheels. If you put on uh, the wheels that have a alternator or a generator built into the wheels. As you drive, the electric car will recharge itself. We've got the technology, probably had the technology for 100 years. We don't need the energy companies. We don't need the oil companies, like I said about the UFOs. We don't need the oil companies. And as soon as I put his information down, and I've got his website up on my site, as soon as I put the information on it, suddenly he was being attacked big time. So much so that he's almost don't afraid to call me. On your website. <laughs> what? What's that? What's that? <laughs> so don't put my name on your website. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's well, like my I little commercial says. Years ago, we had what's called the Declaration of Independence, where we declared our independence and we declared our rights. The Supreme Court and the, the politicians have changed that, and they've taken out the taken out two letters, and that's the I-N, and independence, and now it's the Declaration of Independence. They want us completely dependent upon them so that they can control anything and everything we do. It's that simple. It is, and, and they, are, they are going after anybody that wants to be self-sufficient. They want you to be, uh, they want you to, I said, you know, the, the government's idea of greening America is to lease the top of that mountain to a Chinese company so they can put windmills on it, pipe it down the hill to the power company, and sell it to you for a little bit higher because you got to pay a little bit more for green energy. And if we just put the solar on our roof and the wind on our roof, we don't have to pay them. We don't need that. And they don't want that. They're trying to make it so difficult and trying to price solar out of your reach. Well, you know, you can buy solar, the solar equipment from China, very, very cheap, and it's not out of your reach. The catch is they, they make it illegal to, to provide your own electricity. <laughs> yes. Well, Anne Rand had it right, didn't she? Fifty years ago, I remember sitting in prison for a victimless crime and reading Anne Rand saying, the government has no control over honest citizens, so they got to make criminals out of us. Well, you know, the, the, the criminal enterprise, the uh, federal uh, prisons have uh, uh, enterprises built with them to make hundreds and thousands, millions of dollars for uh, the owners of those enterprises. You know, I think it's, I forget what the name of the company is called, but it's, you know, it, it's big business. Prisons are big business. And there's no doubt that uh, any, any way that they can make money, they're going to try and make money. Now, I'm going to chime in here. We've got this Corporation of America, which is owned by Wackenhut, which is basically, who's Wackenhut, Dean? Go ahead, Stu. Uh, Wack Wackenhut is basically Daddy Bush. I call him Daddy Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush. And we got the Corrections Corporation of America, which is, uh, you know, controlling, what, a third or more of the 
a privatized prison system in this country. Uh, that's part of the problem. And, you know, I discovered recently uh, from an attorney, I didn't even know this, that federal judges now, and it's been on the books for several years, federal judges, every time they convict somebody, or uh, not convict them, but uh, sentence them, they're entitled now to a bonus of anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars on their paycheck. Federal prosecutors are entitled to a five to ten thousand dollar bonus for every conviction they get. And FBI, DEA, ATF, and other federal agents are entitled to a one to five thousand dollar bonus on their paycheck for everybody that they help uh, put in jail. Now, is that is, <laughs> they're giving bonuses? Put people into federal prison. Well, they're, they're, they're certainly successful at it. They're certainly successful at it because the United States has more of its citizens in prison than any communist country out there, like China with uh, five times our population. We've got more people in prison in America than anywhere else. Combined. Combined, yes. Combined those other countries and still have more prisons. Now, one, one of my answers, and 45 years ago, I wrote a novel, science fiction novel, never got published because it was too unbelievable. I, I wrote a uh, fiction novel about the United States after victimless crimes had been abolished. And I said, you know, Mr. Obama, tear down that wall between us and Mexico, abolish all the laws against victimless crimes, and let the Peruvians, the Colombians, the Mexicans, bring all their tomatoes up, bring all their cocaine up, bring all their methamphetamine up, lay it on the table, pay a duty on it, and let Americans come get it. If you want to kill yourself with heroin, sit over in that corner right there, and I'd, I'd rather watch you kill yourself with a needle in your arm than to house you in a prison for $50,000 a year so you could go to work for IBM for 25 cents an hour. I mean, it just don't sound like a good thing for the people. Why do we need these laws against drugs? If the government, if the CIA, and the Mossad are bringing all the drugs into this country, and they're paying off our politicians, you know, how, how can Americans sit back and think about your children or you going to jail for having a joint in your pocket, in Texas, that was 99 years. You can get 99 years, Clay. You can get 99 years for having a joint in your pocket. But we can we can get you seven. We can get you a deal for seven. And you might be able to make parole in a year and a half. While you're building a prison. While you're building another prison. We're using slave labor to build these prisons. We're putting our children in jails and prisons. And IBM's making the money off of it? Oh. I, I find something really wrong with that. How about it, Chip? Since you've been there. You've been there. Well, I, I agree with you 100%. I've been there. I understand what goes on. And it is. It's big business. It's all about the money. Anything that goes on in this country, if there's not money involved in it for the politicians or for the leaders, they, they don't want to go there. They're not going to go there. They're not going to go there to save the taxpayers' money. They're only going to go there to fill their pockets. But like I said, the political line. That political line is those people in line to get their paycheck. Now, Chip, you've got the, uh, you're, uh, you're, you're doing your own postings now on, on my site, and you've got your site, ChipTatum.com. And I've got some of the old stuff that says uh, Gene Chip Tatum Super Spook is back. It's the link. And uh, uh, on on my website, uh, Rumor Dead Black Ops, uh, NSA, CIA, Gene Chip Tatum Live, uh, the Contra Coke Train, the Denver Illuminati Zionist Connection, et cetera. But I've got, I think, a lot of the documents you had given me years ago, which was uh, the uh, DD uh, 240, your DD 214. I've got. Uh, uh, Tatum flight plans, uh, 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 a CIA funding operation, a letter to the Montana State Senate, uh, your affidavit, uh, Tatum FBI Terry Nelson in the Montana drills, uh, uh, Tatum the Amicus uh, Courier Brief, uh, Big Sky uh, Cartel Zeroes In, 
Fort Peck Reservations, Twilight, like Zalibriol, uh, uh, Devota, uh, LA Times and CIA drug involvement, Northern Exposure, Operation Red Rock, Pegasus Dirty Money Laundering, the uh, Contra Coke Train, uh, the President, uh, Cocaine and CIA, uh, and Chronicles, uh, and then of course your arrest where I found out that you were alive. That's on one page. And everybody, if they would go to uh, it's uh, stewweb.com forward slash author forward slash chip hyphen Tatum, they can find all those documents. Now, you did a lot of noise. I mean, you worked with Gary Webb, you worked with uh, with uh, Michael Rupert and, and Terry Reed, our friend. By the way, Terry's only 20 minutes from me here, and he uh, had to go in the woodwork to keep from dying. And he wrote the book. Uh, Clinton Bush and the CIA, but you and uh, Tate, or, uh, uh, Terry Reed and, and Michael Rupert were the ones that blew out about the cocaine trafficking into by the C, supposedly by the CIA, or what is by the CIA Bush boys into California. They got and later on Gary Webb published a story. I mean, he published all those stories and it was crazy and all the other stuff. And she wanted to do something and caved in, but. Gary Webb ended up getting assassinated over putting that book out, didn't he? Yes, he did. And one other person I'm going to throw in there that uh, was key in a, a great uh, involvement was Rodney Stitch with his Departing America. And he pretty well lays it all out there with, the, with all, the, all my old friends, all my old buddies, and a lot of yours, too. It's, uh, it's a great read for those people who uh, haven't read it. Yeah, Rodney has been on my show many times here, many times. And I, I've sold his book uh, back when I had a regular bookstore. But uh, Rodney's up to 20 books on the FraudingAmerica.com if anybody wants to want to see it. I mean, he was a former federal aviation investigator, and he was locked, locked up with Gunther Russoff. Chip, you knew Gunther. You knew him personally, didn't you? Yep. Spend on any of that? Well, Gunther, Gunther, yeah. Gunther, you know, I'm in federal prison with 1,500 Iran contrapires because of those congressional investigations that I exposed, which was Silverado, the Denver Airport, the HUD scandal, and, and what they called the Keating Five. But it was actually the MDC, Silverado's parent company's 200 illegal political campaign money laundering. And uh, uh, Rodney, I got to know him just before they issued the warrant to my ass because of all the noise I was making. But I get thrown down there in, in Springfield, Missouri, to be evaluated where they sent everybody, Sudbury, USA, to really <laughs> make you look like a nutcase. And they couldn't do that with me for some reason. But the shrink, uh, you know, said there wasn't anything the matter with me. Now, that's just... I mean, if you get sent there, you, I guess, you know, it's like uh, getting the Freedom Medal uh, in America, uh, some classify it as. But I'm down there with some of the biggest super spooks in the world. I mean, people on your level, there were several. I was in there with colonels, and I was in there with others. And one of them was Bob Hunt. You remember Bob Hunt, Office of Naval Intelligence, and Lieutenant Command, I mean, a Lieutenant Commander of the SEAL team. Do you remember Bob? Sure. Okay, well... Just for the education of listeners, Bob was the one who captured Noriega uh, when the invasion of Panama happened. And then after why he was capturing Noriega, and he had an arrest warrant for Noriega, his naval SEAL team, and he's surrounding the Vatican down there at, in, in Panama uh, after the Panama invasion. And uh, he's on a, a, a phone with, at the time, government communications with with uh, a walkie-talkie type. He's on the phone with George Herbert Walker Bush, then the President of the United States, who told him, he says, Hunt, you do as I tell you. He says, you kill the Moriega. You don't bring him out alive. He says, Mr. President, I have an arrest warrant for him. He says, we're able to bring him out alive. We've got him surrounded. We're going to bring him out alive. He says, if you aren't, if you don't bring him out alive, he says, I'll kill you. And he says, F you, Mr. President, he's coming out alive. Well, that was the end of Bob Hunt's career. 
the only guy walking around in federal prison in a full military uniform in Springfield, Missouri, where he had no insignias on his uniform, but he was being punished, quote-unquote, for arresting Noriega. The only guy. Now, he's in Roddy's book. These were the type of people that I was in there with, and that's where I got many of my sources uh, from. I knew Al Martin before they arrested me because Al had come across Margie Sloan, and I knew in this 1991 time frame for me, and, uh, and uh, I came across Bill McCoy, and you worked with Bill back in the 1995 to 1997 time frame. And, and uh, so, you know, I've come to learn a lot from various people in your level and understand these things. And I've been preaching out here all along for, for since 1991 uh, or 1993, getting the airways after they had locked me up for ten and a half months and then dismissed the charges against me. But... Gee, you know my background, just for that edification. Am I a hundred pretty much a hundred percent on right in everything that I've been saying all these years? Well, nobody's a hundred percent right, but you're damn well straight you're a straight shooter still and you know, you know what what you're telling them is pretty damn close. You know, there are there are a few things that uh, can be looked at different ways but not much still. Tyree, Bill Tyree told me, uh, said that uh, uh, Harari uh, or his people killed McCoy, too, and of course uh, put him in prison for life. I, I even followed up the story about his courtroom being bugged, and, uh, you know, that was accurate, too. They uh, could tell a bugger. Hey, McCoy, I, the edification of those listening, I, it, it, Gene, who do you think, who do you think left Bill McCoy? Let me tell you something. The, the Friday before Bill McCoy was killed, he told me we talked. Um, we were working on an investigation. And Bill uh, told me that uh, he thought that someone was there, someone was watching him, and someone was going to try to kill him. I don't know who did that. Uh, I honestly don't. But I know he knew that something was going on, but he, he just didn't tell me exactly what. Now, I had talked to him a day or two before his death also, but uh, I found out later from others, without mentioning the names, that uh, they blamed it on uh, Michael Harari, and they blamed it on the Mossad because of the connections with Oklahoma City Building because he was heavily involved with with uh, several people. Uh, all of us were working on that. But, I mean, Bill was a heavyweight. Bill was, uh, you know, a former DOD. Department of Defense. Bill was a, a former spook himself, as I recall. I mean, CID, I, I, Criminal Investigation Division of the United States Army, one hell of an investigator. He was a, a, a became a private investigator, and uh, I mean, he was all over the board. He was a private investigator for everybody. He was a the Hamilton family, and uh, the Inslaw software that was stolen, the prosecutor's software. Uh, that Daddy Bush ended up with all these tri tri uh, back doors in, uh, you know, in, in other governments of the world uh, for his E-Systems of Dallas, Texas, and their West Star satellite. Uh, there was also Private Kyrie's, uh, uh, which was pulled up uh, uh, affidavit that, um, that uh, Clayton has referred to several times. Uh, Bill was the private investigator for you. He was the private investigator for... for uh, for uh, Leo Wante, he did work for him. He did work for all kinds of people. And I had the opportunity uh, to meet Bill in person after working with him since 91, but in 1993 in, in his home outside of Fairfax. And uh, Bill was on to everything. I mean, he had affidavits. So I've got stuff of his. And, and there are, you know, documents buried of his that I don't have, but they're, they're around of everything that he invested. I mean... He told me stories. He had an affidavit of a gal that uh, was dating one of uh, uh, George Bush's, uh, Shackley, I believe it was, uh, and Shackley's girlfriend inside the CIA, and how Daddy Bush and Shackley go in before Daddy Bush was president, uh, back uh, after, you know, after he was CIA director. They go into CIA headquarters, and Shackley was having an affair with his girl for two weeks, and she was the secretary there, and Shackley was saying too much in bed. Uh, with her about different stuff, and she was inquiring too much. 
And so they walked in there, and they took her a Coke, and uh, they handed her a Coke, and she thanks them, and they're sitting there uh, talking to her, sitting in the chairs in front of her, watching her die from the poisoning that they put in a Coke. And uh, uh, she actually says, oh, yeah, he says, uh, you know, I said too much the other night in bed with you, so, sweetie, he says, uh, you know, we just poisoned you. You're going to be dead in about five minutes. And she started laughing, and then all of a sudden she started coughing up blood. She's crawling out on her hands and knees there, or he left at that point. And uh, that's basically what the affidavit reads. And as she's crawling out of CIA headquarters in the main lobby on her hands and knees, no one's there to help her. She gets to the car and makes it to the hospital, and they were able to pump her stomach and cleanse her blood out. Now, these are the kind of things that Bill had in the way of uh, evidence. And, and I mean, it was off the charts things that I saw and the things, some things that I copied. And, I mean, this has been the way these people have been able to operate inside the United States government for years. George or Walker Bush, I mean, when we look back at all this, isn't he really the godfather kingpin of the crime syndicate that overthrew America? Well, I have to look at it that way. That's the man I work for, and uh, he's a very evil man. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, I had uh, I I I've smoked a joint with Caddy O'Brien and uh, talked with her about Bush the child molester and uh, you know how she uh, was delivering heroin to him. I guess she's in hiding now too. Wasn't it wasn't it through uh, Gene that uh, Daddy Bush what was it he. He drank a bottle of uh, uh, Jack Daniels or uh, Black Jack, whichever it was, and his son George W. drank a bottle every day, each one of them, plus they, uh, Junior started, George W. Bush started uh, lines of cocaine all day long, and Daddy Bush shot heroin all day long. Isn't that about the truth? <coughs> well, that was an issue. Um, drugs with Junior was an issue. I can't really say about uh, Daddy Bush, um, even though I were or saw him in that. We were met in those private, private settings. Are you familiar Jeff, with that? I don't know whether you're familiar with this or not at all, whether you ever operated over that. I'm just going to ask you because these are things that I've learned and, and uh, we haven't said it on the air, but there's a place in Houston, Texas, and there's a hotel down there off the highway. Uh, it's, it's south of Highway 10 on that 610 uh, uh, freeway. Where Daddy Bush lives out there by 10 and 6 10. So there's a hotel on that on that road that goes straight into Houston, Texas, from the from the west off of 6 10 there, and it's just south of 10. And I don't have a map in front of me, but there's a hotel there, and there's a country club. And I've under come to understand in this past 10 years that most of the illegal, covert, top Illuminati operations are run right out of that country club. And that's where Daddy Bush is seen every day when he's in Houston, Texas. He's at that hotel slash country club where they have a room there, a special room at the country club, the golf course, that is lead-lined, and Daddy Bush takes people in there, and their cell phones and their computers and everything they've got on them has to remain outside as he goes into the room with them to make discussions about the legal covert of uh, uh, operations, illegal corporate operations, where he is plotting and planning to, uh, uh, with his Al Qaeda network, which is financed by the, the Saudi royal family and run with the intertwining of Michael Harari, who's the head chief of the Mossad, and his shadow government boys named Gary Best, Inc., and others. Uh, are you familiar with that at all? You know, there there was a company and a group uh, we worked with in the Texas area, and we used their facilities all the time called Iron Mountain. And uh, they're in several, several locations all around Texas. In, in Denver, Atlanta, uh, Austin, Houston, outside of Houston, uh, New Brownfields. So I, Iron Mountain was one of their main uh, conference areas, yes. Okay, right. now... If, if you were to define, just real quick for the edification listeners, would this be pretty much true? There's a council of 13, they call it, and if you were to take the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill for the edification listeners, and, and, and that being the, uh, you know, the new world order, the top is 
Satan that they worship, and then underneath the first layer on the pyramid would be the Council of Thirteen or the Council of Twelve. Those are the top mob dons in the world. And am I right or am I wrong? If I am, set me straight, set the listener straight. It'd be George Herbert Walker Bush, Leonard Melman, Larry Mizell, David Rockefeller, Lawrence, uh, or not Lawrence, he's dead now, but uh, Meyer Rothschild, Grace of Grace and Company, uh, Anzwar Ben Sharia of Israel, the head rabbi, uh, Pope Benedict, who resigned, and uh, a guy named Warburg, and I'm missing the other names. I don't know who they are. But would you say that those are the 12 mob dons of the world? Well, all those names are very familiar, and, and as the OSGs, we would do jobs for them. So um, they're right up there. And there are others also that we work for. So, uh, Well, would you name some of the ones that you uh, worked for? Can you do that? Well, um, there was... Uh, uh, Lord out of uh, out of England, um, and through him we were working directly through MI6 and uh, the Thatcher group. Um, there were out of South, South Africa huge entities that we were working for. Um, you know, I, I I really don't want to go into some of the names because you have to remember the things I can talk about I can talk about because they were thrown before a federal judge. And if I talk about something other than those issues that were before the federal judge, I could end up right back where I was. So. All right, let me let me uh, let me let's talk a little bit about the future here. I've said, uh, you know, I I like to have answers. I get tired of just talking about it. this. Is there ain't no in my opinion, there's no such thing as a new world order. The money changers, Jesus ran out of the temple, are still with us. They just changed the name of the temple. They called it the Federal Reserve and Bank of England. And uh, somebody told me once, uh, well, they don't have the power they uh, they want you to believe they have. If they did, we'd still be under the Syrian Empire, or the Roman Empire, or the uh, or the British Empire. Well, I think we're possibly, quite possibly, still under the British Empire. The Queen of England controls our uh, Social Security. The banks, uh, headquartered right there in the city of London control all of our money, and, uh, you know, the uh, Bar Association probably has the uh, uh, office right next door to the uh, Bank of England, and so all of the lawyers, all of our lawyers, since uh, the War of 1812, all of the lawyers were set free. They lost the 13th Amendment, and uh, that barred lawyers with titles of nobility from running for office. So we've got lawyers in the executive branch, we got lawyers in the uh, and the judicial branch, we got lawyers in every branch of government, and the only thing uh, they work for are, are the, you know, they, they make the laws that make everything we do illegal. So, so what are some answers here? This, uh, I've said it's really hard to, uh, you know, fight the new world order. I can't afford to go over to Brussels. I can't afford, uh, you know, it doesn't do any good to go into the UN. Uh, but we can change things in our neighborhoods, in our counties. One voice, I, I was one voice, and I stopped uh, zoning in Socorro County, New Mexico, walking into the city, into the county meetings, and saying, wait, wait what communist? trying to pass the law. You want to come out and tell a rancher that's been out here for a hundred years what he can do on his own property? What are you trying to do? Get somebody killed and they, they back that they back down. This whole plan of uh, West, Noah West, and, uh, called a Noah's Ark project, using veterans. I, I To me, it's a real, the, the shame in America. There's a, We've got a couple of things to really be ashamed about. One, is that more of my brothers that went to Vietnam and survived Vietnam have killed themselves here in America than uh, died in Vietnam that the Vietnamese killed defending their own country. They uh, uh, and and we've got veterans that are homeless. We got veterans in the hospitals in the VA hospitals that are being fed drugs for what having a conscience. 
I find there's something wrong with that. Yeah, that it is. Right next to me, we've got 50,000, 40 to 50,000 veterans returning from Iraq and from Afghanistan. It's been reported on veterans today uh, that are committing suicide each year. We've got the highest numbers that there is. We have an overthrow by this crime syndicate over this over this country. And I like Bruce Campbell's idea. And, of course, you, you might know uh, Bruce Dean. I haven't talked to you about it, but... I've, I've, I've got I've got J B Campbell's whole plan. I've got that. I've got yeah, J B Campbell's up. And his plan is to go in with uh, neighborhood crime watches. It gives you the opportunity to clean up your own neighborhood as well as the opportunity to uh, to uh, reach out and educate your neighbor uh, to the problems and have a discussion with them about the overthrow of America. His second plan of action is to set up civilian uh, police oversight committees, which takes away the authority of the police, where uh, they abuse somebody in the streets or shoot and kill somebody out of, uh, out, of a, uh, out of a cop. That's right. Bring And the third part of that is bring the military into the resistance, which is exactly what we, we are... have to investigate the cops of brutality and then put them in jail. And, and, and that's uh, Homeland Security's Nazi, uh, Zionist regime. It's no longer a Nazi regime. It's a Zionist regime. And the third is, of course, to be reaching out to people inside the military and the government. And I created recallpetitions.com with Victor Head. It was the first one to go after a congressman in Colorado who signed off on gun control legislation. And he was successful. And uh, and uh, his comrades, should we say, other patriots up in Colorado Spring forces for him. They removed two uh, congressmen who signed that legislation uh, in a recall. And and they were they they did it. I believe it was in September uh, this past year. Now they turned around and they had another one here a month or six eight weeks ago. They had another one. They brought up on a recall, and she actually resigned her uh, office because she did not want to go through the embarrassment, she said, of a recall election when, in fact, she got a huge injection from Bloomberg, uh, like the others had during the recall, and uh, the, the mayor of, uh, of New York, and uh, uh, he had injected a lot of money in her campaign, so she uh, took the money. She can convert her campaign contributions to personal income as, she, as long as she pays income tax, so she resigned. So my thought is, you use that. You go to your council member. You set up your your police oversight committee, civilian oversight. They say no, uh, because they're part of the crime syndicate. You do an immediate recall on them and get rid of them. Now, the idea is to go back to the local level and get rid of the problem. And the American people themselves are frustrated, uh, uh, Chip. Uh, they don't know what to do. I mean, we've had this. As you said to me quite some time ago, that you thought that when Occupy arose and all the kids were hit in the streets, that this was the beginning of a, a, a true revolution in this country. But they all got whipped out once they found out they really didn't know what they were doing. And second, they weren't man enough to stand up to that tear gas that was being sprayed in their faces. What do people need to do, Gene? get involved. I mean, these, the information's out here on what has happened to this country with guys like you from the 1990s bringing it out, and Al Martin bringing it out, and uh, uh, Jerry Reed bringing it out. And, I mean, I've got everybody's books up on the front of my website, Rodney Stitch. I mean, my name's in, t I think, t uh, seven out of the 12 I contributed to. But the truth on what has really happened is basically there. It's in several books, and it is that I'm pushing the sale of books because I'm not. I'm trying to educate for now 30 years the American public that we've been overthrown. But the average person out here, you know, they don't know what to do. All they do is sit around listening to bullshitters like the DEPCA, uh, Department of Homeland Security Stooges, or like Alex Jones or Glenn Beck or Bill O'Reilly, Mr. C.I. Bill O'Reilly. Uh, or they listen to uh, uh, Lugerhead Hannity or whatever on their TV or listen to the, alt they call it the alternative uh, radio out here. And, and you're familiar with this, Jeff. But truthfully, what can the American people do with this?
this point to overthrow this problem to help cleanse it up. For me, they need to start a movement, and they need to call it Occupy America. Occupy America would be a movement that would take out all of the incumbents. I'm telling you, and I know, Clay, you say that I have a hard time with the media on this, but if people would just do it, starting at a local level, take out the incumbents, but on the federal level, get every one of those sen senators and congressmen out of there and put new people in, with the understanding from those new people they put in that they will do certain things. Have to have term limits. Well, that's, have what, to have budget. that's one of the things that uh, J.B. Campbell proposes with this American Defense Party. It's an American Defense Party made up of Americans, and, and they're really not even running for an office. They want to take the incumbents out. They want to try them. We've got enough evidence here. I said we don't need a million men in March. All we need is 13 people, an honest judge, and 12 honest citizens. We've got enough evidence that uh, if we were in an honest court of law, an honest uh, something other than a yellow fringe flag, don't bring that Constitution in here, court. We could we could try these people. We could put the right people in jail instead of putting. Uh, your brother and your children in in prisons so they can be used as slave labor. We can put the right people in prison for what they've done to us. You're not going to get a federal judge to do that. You're not going to get a local judge to do that. There, there are entities within the federal government uh, that are there to protect that. The only way you're going to do it is as a voter. As a voter, as a voter, as a voter, as a voter as vote their asses right. out. Get them out of there. That is exactly I mean, what... That's hey, hold on a second. Uh, part of the problem that we have that I'm aware of is with that E-System satellites that are you know, part of the uh, Department of Defense, Daddy Bush, E-Systems, you know, where Margaret Thatcher's son was getting a paycheck, George W. Bush, uh, George H. W. Bush in control. That E-Systems, and uh, the West Star satellites that they basically took over of the government, uh, all I know it testified, it was part of the company. I'm aware that that Inslaw software, the Promise software, tied in with those uh, West Star satellites, and, and Michael Reconnaissuto was still in jail, framed up by Ted Gunderson, and he'll be out in four years, and Jimmy Rothstein, you remember him, Gene, he's going to be hitting the airways uh, this next week. Uh, Clay, you're going to be putting him on next week. Great. And uh, he was former customs and chasing Daddy Bush and all his pedophile ring. But... Uh, the West are, I've learned that, that, that they're able to control the electronic voting machines, period. And I had, uh, I don't want to tell too deep, but somebody in Interpol, another country, helped me during, I believe it was a 2000 or 2004, 2006 election, and actually knocked out, uh, it's our, I'll put it this way, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it, it doesn't make any difference, but French intelligence took a spot next. And, uh, you know, the French are intertwined with our government, was for a number of years with new sort of votes and other things, you know, Lafayette, George Washington Agreement. But they took out two of those satellites during an election because they were controlling and moving voting numbers on voting machines. Now, we had the first honest election, and that was the election when when uh, 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 Nancy Pelosi became the House Speaker that year. Uh, I'll just put it that way. Her promises, by the way, were that if there was an honest election and she were to be reelected, she had all the 9-1-1 evidence, and she said that she would, she would quote, unquote, expose them. She never did that. She became House Speaker because of a fair, honest election. And uh, she never did do that. Instead, her husband ended up in business with her. So, you know, I just want to bring that out. I'm in agreement with you. We need to put good, honest people in. But we're at a point now that where we've already been overthrown. And it's so deep that I'm aware of that this new NSA spy base in Utah has an alien sex to it. And it's all intertwined, which I believe the aliens are the fallen angels, but it's all intertwined. Now, I have sources telling me that, and even 
Gordon Duff has reported on this. This is not the source on this, but he's reported on this on Veterans Today that they're able to control you through your TVs, your telephones, your cell phones, your uh, computers, and actually turn you into a mind-controlled uh, assassin uh, with this new technology. And that's what they did with this guy in the naval yard shooter, the shooting. But I like your idea of Occupy America, but we've got to all make people understand how to get there. We've got to figure out a way, all of us, to come together and say enough is enough and put a halt to it once and for all. Because all we've got is this Zionist Illuminati overthrow of America. So with that said, you got any other suggestions, Gene, on this subject? I, you know, the, the only way I can see that anything's going to get done is get get those uh, get that dead weight out of Washington. Um, and and if you if what you're saying is right, and those voting machines are all rigged, you know that's going to be tough. Another issue is the bondholders. We have plenty of bondholders uh, in all this country. Uh, we need to get rid of the Federal Reserve. That's one thing we need to do. That's for sure. Um, and I, I like Putin's idea on trying to get rid of that. Uh, all I can say is get the dead weight out, folks. That's the only thing. That's the only thing you can do. And if there's enough numbers, if there's enough out there, and you know that those those voting machines are being rigged just by the numbers of people coming out and saying, you know, we voted for this guy, and look at how many people voted for this guy, but he didn't win. That's you know. Now, when that, I so when I said that must get rid of the electoral college, make a vote and vote. You know? When I said something about a court, I'm not talking about a federal court. I'm not even talking about a uh, local court with a yellow French flag. I'm talking about a common law court, a common law grand jury, and you present the evidence that we've got to the common law grand jury and issue an indictment. Against these politicians, start out local. Start out local. Well, anybody? Uh, I was I was in Thousand, I was held in Tampa. There were guys trying to hold the, the, the trying to hold common law courts and did indictments, and they threw their ass in prison. So you know. Yes, yeah. and I, I'm in agreement with what the chip's saying on this. Look, you know, I was told by one attorney, uh, disbarred attorney, matter of fact. Uh, uh, I don't know, a year ago, he said, Stu, you're the only guy with a state grand jury order or an order by a court, uh, Judge Richard Mason Denver. Well, I filed this grand jury demand, and he actually accepted it. The clerks accepted it and took it. He was assigned to it. And, uh, you know, Al Martin stood up and played with me after the judge talked to me, and Al Martin and I testified before another judge, and this is case number 95Y107 in Denver. I've still got an open grand jury case number that I can't even get before that grand jury. And here a federal judge ordered the U.S. attorney, Henry Solano, to hear us out and to prosecute that needed to be prosecuted. And the first thing that happens is I get anthrax and hit with cyanide and anthrax attack. And uh, I thank Gene Tatum because I did not know that it was uh, a combination. I thought it was just anthrax, according to the doctor. But I found out later that it was cyanide, and I got that out of my body. And uh, we won't say how Gene was able to do that, but Gene's a power keg. Uh, and, and so Al Martin had been hit also and arrested and stuck in jail for 45 days over that, trying to. And I have the recordings of that up on my YouTube site, Stu Web. Uh, uh, Stu Web One, uh, it's YouTube forward slash Stu Web One, and I'll put that and rejuvenate it on my site today. But the, and and here we are with Peter Gualja, who was a, a NSA investigator, who they were trying to kill at the time, and the whole thing covered up because he discovered the Iraq Gate. Uh, uh, it was all the Iraq Gate, and it re resurrected as the DNL bank scandal, and then re resurrected as Gulf War illness. Gulf War Syndrome, now they call it Gulf War Illness, where Bush had sold and Millman had sold those biological chemical agents to Iraq. They used them as Scud missiles on Desert Storm 1 um, uh, people, our troops, and those Scud missiles that kept exploding above them and raining on them. And 
these biological chemical uh, weapons is uh, considered to be trees and sedition of the Markley Cohen Denture Act. And even uh, a guy, uh, Ron Baird, if you remember him, uh, Gene, or Chip, uh, yeah. with the Colorado Daily, he had written a story about you. He wrote one about me. He wrote one about Al Martin. And he, he wrote about this uh, biologicals, Iraq Gate, DNL Bank, where Hillary was on the board of directors, and, and, and Bush and Daddy were making the stuff. And, how they contaminated the Colorado River and Lake Mead that caused red tide in 1995 and deformed fish because of the San Gary refinery in Fruit of Colorado. They were, they were uh, making uh, some of the stuff up. Uh, that's 300 south the Colorado River and it rains and it snows. It gets into the river. And so they contaminated waterways. And then, of course, Boca Raton, Florida, where they were shipping it out of the old <coughs> Melman's in bushes, Neil Bush, El Millman, Boca Raton, Florida warehouse down there, you're probably familiar with it, where Jeb Bush and Holly North kept stuffing the drugs and the cash in there at the Boca Raton airport, still do to today, and uh, all that stuff. I mean, that was all brought out to the U.S. Attorney, and to the FBI. There's recordings on my, up on my YouTube, and I'll put them back up today so those listening, when they hear this show later on, uh, in archives or listening live today, they'll be able to see that evidence. And that's an that's a standing grand jury order where the judge says, if the U.S. attorney doesn't do his job, Mr. Stewart, will the attorney not allow you and your witnesses to go before the federal grand jury? I've had just the court attorney. I mean, that's a fact. Where's the grand jury? I keep requesting every time I do it, murder me. Yeah. So we don't need it because there's, there's places you can't get it done in a you can't get it done in the system in in the streets and hold trial. That's the old way. We have to use the system today to ever burn these people, or we have to have just an uprising in America and say enough's enough and enough people picking up their guns and put a stop to it. Now there's a hundred million of us that are locked and loaded and armed out here. And there's only one million of the Department of Homeland Security intertwined police departments, you know, and all, and and the sheriffs and all the other. I mean, we could put a stop to it if we had to, and we probably have about half of them that might join forces with us. But then again, is that the way to do it? I don't so, know. Just, you I don't know. It, let, let me, can I yes, say go something? ahead. Interject something. Yes. Please. I was in Vietnam, and uh, I wear my Vietnam veteran hat when I walk around. And I get uh, people saying to me, thank you for your service, sir. And uh, you know what I say back to them? Thank you for getting us out. If enough people came together, you don't have to do an armed revolution. You can, they got us out by joining hands and just getting us out. They just got to come together. Americans have to come together and say enough is enough. That's all. That's it. Enough is enough. Chip. You know, I made the statement that I helped stop the Vietnam War. I volunteered for Vietnam. I didn't go. They tried to kill me before I got there. But when I got out, I started selling peace symbols in Kmart, in 7-Elevens, in uh, Spencer's Gifts, everywhere. I put uh, peace symbols, uh, peace symbol over the earth, peace symbol over the flag. I put them everywhere. And uh, we stopped the war. An activist for years, Clay. You know, you've been an activist for years, but now we have to, all of us, whistleblowers, activists, Americans, super spooks, ex super spooks, people inside of our military are trying to clean things up. You're seeing it with all these fired generals. We need to get some way or another, get the American people. Dean, give us, we're running out of time here. Why don't you take the mic and, 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 and tell us what we really need to do in your opinion? What people need to do, how, plan, plot, plan to do this. Well, I can tell you, I can tell you what my suggestion is. I brought the Free American back out after they tried to kill me. That's available up on my website. Freeamerican.com is my website. I've got the magazines there. I've got books. Everything we've talked about is in my book, Mystery Babylon, New World Order Unveiled. And you got this radio show. you got this radio show here. You've heard things on this radio show. All of it's true. 
There's nothing, uh, nothing stays here. There's no agenda other than our freedom and our liberty. And I call myself the voice of liberty. This radio show may be the most important show that you've heard this year. This show right here with Chip Tatum, with me, with Stu Webb, pass it on. It's, I got it recorded in spite of all the difficulties. I got it up. Uh, I've even got YouTube working while we were, while we were sitting here, while you guys were talking. I've been working on my site, getting it back up. We've got it here. We've got the information. I had J.B. Campbell on yesterday, and, and his plan for the no party party is a great plan. It's, uh, we, uh, uh you know, <laughs> If Jesse Ventura was running for uh, president and got elected, he would be the first president since George Washington that wasn't aligned with one of the two wings of the uh, global bird. You know, the, uh, we, the answers are here. This plan for the veterans, putting all the veterans to work, building these self-sufficient family homes, building these self-sufficient villages, that's a good plan. We're not talking about a revolution. Hey, hey, I don't doubt that. Let the, I'm not trying to interrupt you. It's your show, and I know that you have great ideas, and, and we need to do this. We need to do these things. But first, what we need to do is we need to take the head off the snake. And, Gene, what do you suggest to take the head off the snake? I'll tell you what. You've got to start local. You've got to have your little hometown meetings. You know what we need to do? We need to do the Amway approach. Tell three of your friends and have those three tell three of their friends and have those three tell those three of their friends. If we can do that, that's the most basic level. Look how successful that could be. If, if three would, would turn three, would turn three, would turn three. Take the Amway approach. Save America. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with that. I got on a bandwagon too. Besides what we say, what you have said of Occupy America, that we demand that a grand jury hear all the evidence of all this stuff that's out there by the various ones who can prove these things, and and demand <coughs> of this Justice Department to prosecute these people. Wouldn't that be a good plan as well? It'd be a wonderful plan if you could get it, if you could get anyone in the press to do it. You know, I, I work with those guys. I know that there's blockers out there. And they, they block well. That's right. Well, over the last week, the people that I've had here on the common law grand juries, that's a good idea. The, uh, the uh, uh, Bruce Campbell's idea for, uh, you know, to help the political parties, they haven't done anything to help us. All we, and, and Stu, you've got, uh, I've got links to the recall petitions up on my site. Everything is here, and and the idea of uh, we can get uh, we can get the uh, solar film from uh, China relatively cheap, and if you if you just went in your neighborhood and made a flyer, I may make one for you today or tomorrow or this weekend. I'll make a flyer for you. Take it to your neighbors and say we got a problem in America. And the problem is the Republicans and the Democrats. The problem is the Federal Reserve. The problem is uh, the uh, this this communist fascist regime. It doesn't. It's totalitarianism. That's what it is. And if if we we can solve it in one block, in one block, if we organize, if we talk to our neighbors, if we had this neighborhood watch that J. B. Campbell uh, recommends. We can do this one block at a time. And, hey, let's see if we can produce more solar panels in our block than you can in yours. You got a garage? Make it. Make of these solar panels. Make the little windmills. You don't need the big, huge, $1,000 windmills. You can make it out of 50-gallon uh, barrels and, uh, and a wheel off of a junkyard. You can make it. You can you can you can turn things around. I remember hearing about some kid in Africa that wanted to watch television, so he created a windmill. He created a wind generator and and had electricity, so he was able to get on the internet. 
We can do this, folks. We are the most productive, the most resourceful nation in the world, but we haven't been that productive and we haven't been that resourceful since they napped at us. And they're going to try to do even more than that with this uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP. That's a... Uh, that's your that's your enemy and oh you, and oh yeah let's not even forget and this is something that you can talk about locally this agenda 21 bullshit how about it skip hey, Satan, I'm, I'm you know I I got an attitude out here brute force is necessary but I don't think we got enough people that uh, go in and brute force them and put them in jail so we're gonna have to forget about all this. You know, their agenda, their agenda, their agenda. It's now the American people's agenda, what we are going to do to clean the freaking problem up. That's what we should be thinking, how we can do it, how we can come together to do it. Instead of talking about, ah, oh, the fear factor, the fear factor. The evil thrives off of fear. They get energy from fear that they're constantly putting in the American people. And the American people have been so programmed, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing this and that. I'm tired myself of talking about what they have done. We know what they've done, and we know what their plans are, you know, with a new world order government run out of Israel, out of Jerusalem. It's time we shut them down. All right, we're out of time here. It's time they come to the jail cells, they those at the very top and the whole food chain of this Illuminati Zionist takeover of America. And it's time they are put in handcuffs, brought to justice, and we take all the money they stole in the $5,000 trillion since 81, and we put it back in the U.S. Treasury in a clawback, big jackpot, and allow everybody that was ever stolen a dime to right. get their money back. All right. All the pension yes, and all their lost Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Chip. Hold it, still. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, uh, we're out of time. Let Chip get the last word in here. Go ahead, Chip. I, ju I just appreciate the time you gave, gave me today, Clay. And uh, remember, people, we want to occupy America. We want it back. All right, sir. Make a flyer. Put this uh, radio show on the flyer. Educate people. God bless you all. Thank you for listening. Let's save it. Thank <laughs> you.